We're on board a 64 foot Vantari with 692 TAs. That's turbo after cooled. This is the turbo. This is the air intake, which is an air sep. The air sep pulls vapors through these two hoses and then drains the vapor back into the engine. And where do those vapors that come in the top go from? They come from the valve cover. They go through here from both valve covers into the air set. This is seven, two housings. And then underneath it drains back into the engine. Okay. And uh, then the turbo sits over here. Right. The, the turbo takes in the air. It compresses it. And then puts it into the blower. The exhaust part of the turbine is engine exhaust going out, turns the turbine, is connected to the air turbine. Okay, so which is the engine exhaust that connects to the turbine? Right here. So we got engine exhaust coming out of both manifolds, goes into this exhaust manifold. There's a turbine inside that turns the compressor turbine, okay. which sucks in the air. So then the exhaust goes out and goes out the stern. There's water injected. There's a hose right here that injects it so that it cools the exhaust. Why do you want cooled exhaust? So you don't burn the boat up. Whoa. It's attached to exhaust hoses that would melt. Huh. The exhaust is somewhere between 600 and 800 degrees, and that's not good for exhaust hose that's rated at 250 degrees. <laughs> and what drives the, uh, the turbine? Okay, when the engine's running, the exhaust comes out, both manifolds, goes through the this, this snap, this, this, this shell here and turns the turbine, which is connected to this turbine, which takes the incoming air and turns it into boost. The boost goes in through the blower, and there's an after cooler that takes water and cools that boosted air. Where is that after cooler? Below the blower. Uh -huh. Okay, we have throttle controls our Hynotic, you'll see up in the bridge, you have your Hynotic controls. They're fed by this block right here. It has, you know you have two stations when you have four connections. So when you advance the throttle from up above, this, this comes back and this opens the throttle. When you stop the engine with the stop lever, this shuts the fuel off. So it's an electric stop solenoid using a relay. So you need to be careful around here. This is hot. When this is energized, it comes through to here and turns on the solenoid. And that's what shuts down the fuel. Right, shuts the engine off. And you mentioned that you shouldn't be painting the rod that goes into that solenoid. You want to try to limit the paint on here. Because it's spring loaded. Okay. So if this spring is not connected right here, then it might not start if this is pushed in. So it takes the spring to make this stay in the run position. Mm -hmm. And what are we looking at here? This is the Hynotic controls that controls your throttle. Okay, so both of these things are part of the Hynotic system. Yes. Okay. And that Hynotic system is connected to the Glendinning over here. So when you turn on the Glendinning, this engine is the slave. In other words, you, you turn on the Glendinning and you push the port throttle ahead. The starboard then becomes your throttle for both engines. So when 
inside. So the Glenn Denning is, is the synchronizer system. Right. It synchronizes both engines together. So when you push up the starboard throttle, the port, the port throttle then, uh, using the Glenn Denning, there's a connection in between that tells the port engine to catch up to the starboard. And when it catches up, it stays there. Overflow for the cooling system, one for the port, and one for the starboard. I'll caution you about taking off the pressure cap. We don't want to do that when it's hot. And when it's hot, that, that's telling you it's full. If you open it now, you'll get some coolant. You can open this other one because the hose goes up and down. But this shows your level right here. And that should always show some fluid? It, it typically we're going to try to stay in the middle. Okay. What happens is when your engine gets hot, the water expands. Without this expansion tank, it comes out this hose into the bilge so that you're adding coolant to your system. This lets it expand into the tank and then as it cools down it lets it come back. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Okay, the fuel comes in through the ray course. Then it goes after the ray course, it goes into the fuel pump. From the, the fuel, fuel pump, pump is where? Very hard to see. Okay. It's right back here. It's driven off the blower. Okay, it comes out of there and goes back to your secondary fuel filter. Which is this right here. Right. And then it comes in and then these two feed the two cylinder heads. Now if we had trouble, let's say the port fuel pump died or somebody turned the valves off for the port engine what we can do is open this this is connected to the same filter we have on the other engine open this valve and open this valve what that'll do is this engine's running this will supply fuel pressure to the other engine so that we can maneuver tie up and then figure out what I did wrong <laughs> meanwhile you leave it shut off when you don't need it. On the wall we have a testing device with a pressure gauge on it. If you connect that gauge onto here, onto this connection and this connection, by opening either one of the valves you can see what fuel pressure the engine has. But temporarily to check your fuel pressure that'll work. But we still have the the come home feature with these two valves. So you only need one fuel pump to run both engines. Okay, so I see some other uh, connections over here. This uh, car corrugated cover, what, what is that connecting to? Well, this is the relay that does your stop solenoid. And these are your, your senders for your cooling system. You have an alarm, water temperature for this gauge up here and water temperature for the bridge. What, what is this thing? That's your thermostat housing. You have two. The thermostats were just replaced. They were stuck open. That makes your engine run too cold. Okay, and then this thing over here? This is your heat exchanger. There is a zinc in here. And I'll caution you about the zinc on the engine. The zinc back here, we're not going to use because when I opened up the pumps, the zincs were stuck in the, in the raw water pump. So these just have plugs on them. Pieces of zinc uh, on the will in... Will fall down into the impeller. Right. So where you do have the zincs is in the output zone. The inlet and outlet, of, there's two places for zincs. Okay. Here and the other end. And that's the only two places you need them. Before you put them in, you need to tighten the zinc onto the plug so that they don't fall out. So the plugs stay and the zincs are changeable. Right. Alright, what are we looking at down here? 
This is the alternator. And is that necessary to run these engines since they're diesels? Well, once the engines start, if you have a battery charger, you can throw the alternators away. The alternators are made to get us home. And what I would do is shut off the battery charger, rely on the alternators until you get a low battery warning, which means they're not working. Then, then you uh, shut off the, the charger and go with the alternators. All right. Okay, and this is, is where your seawater comes in. There's raw water pumps we were talking about with the zincs. Underneath the front of the engine, there is a valve. And you can probably see the port one. That valve's open, it goes through the sea strainer, goes into the raw water pump. Which and where's the raw water pump here? Right here on top. There's the raw water pump. Okay. So that supplies seawater, which cools the heat exchanger. Okay. This is the seacock. It's open right now. When it's perpendicular to the opening, it's closed. And that is what feeds the sea strainers over here. Right, the sea water for cooling. All right, and what are we looking at in these two dials here? Okay, you got this one is the starboard engine battery switch. And by switching this over, this connects the starboard to the port engine. The port engine has its own battery switch, so th this would manually parallel it. Let's see the other one there. And the heat exchanger, if you took the end off, you would see tubes. It's called a tube bundle. The seawater goes through the heat exchanger, and the fresh water goes through the other side of the tube. So the engine supplies the water, the fresh water through here, cools it, and then puts it back in the engine. And so this is feeding the internal uh, sea coolant. Water, sea water from the raw water. That's pump. the sea water input on right. that side. And then when it comes out, it comes out the other side, and it goes back and it feeds the exhaust. Okay. And what are these things up front here? These are... Raycor fuel filters, and you can see there's a valve on the front. This is on both filters. This would be on just this one, where the arrow points, that's where it's taking the fuel from. One will run the engine. This is the other one, and straight up and down would be both filters. And why do you need two? For capacity. Any water you get will end up in the bottom of the ray cores. At the bottom of the ray core there is a valve and you need to be careful how hard you turn it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And that's to let out any water that collects in there. Right. The fuel will sit on top of the water the water will go to the bottom of the bowl and then you can let the water out. Correct. So remember these engines return fuel to that line. That's from the port and this is from the starboard. And where do they return the fuel? It returns the fuel up here and it goes, it just says keep closed. That's because we got one going that way to that tank and the other going this way to that tank. So the engine sends back excess fuel through the returns back to the tanks. Correct. We have a dipstick on each engine. After the engines are shut down for 20 minutes, you should see a full mark right here, and then a low mark. Okay. From the low mark to the high mark is about a gallon. But we're going to run halfway. And the reason you do that is when you're out in the sea, this oil is moving around. And if it hits the crankshaft, it vents up into here and the engine tries to get rid of it. So by keeping it halfway, 
you won't burn fuel needlessly or oil. Okay, when you look at the oil, the best way to see that the oil's okay is you rub your hands. And as long as it has lubricity, it's okay. If you pull a dipstick out and then you see something shiny way up here, you could have fuel dilution. Now there's another way to check for that. If you took a match and held it under here, regular oil will just spread out from the heat. If you have fuel, you'll hear it go pssst. So fuel dilution would be caused by something under the valve cover allowing the fuel to go and to drain through the head and back into the oil pan. And we don't want that. That's something we stop and we fix it. We don't keep running. We're looking at the transmission. The controls from the uh, top deck come down and can set it forward or in reverse. That's the only option there or uh, in neutral. On the transmission there is a separate dipstick and in our uh, pre-departure checks we always want to be checking the fluid in the transmission as well as the main engines.